here at the London Art Fair with the first director, Sarah Monk. Hi, uh, David. Back with the bang for 2022. First time you've done this for a while now. Does it feel a bit rusty around the edges? It feels actually gloriously familiar. Um, we obviously haven't run the fair for the last two years. So our last edition was in January 2020 and then the world turned and we all rolled with the punches. But um, we are absolutely thrilled to be back here in Islington. You're doing it in spring this year. Does it, do you feel, has, has it taken on a bit more of a spring feel? I mean, in front of us here, there are some flowers, so that's distracting you slightly. <laughs> but does it feel a bit more like we've crept out of the, the winter? Yeah, definitely. I think it's been, um, you know, the last couple of months have taken a lot of, of planning and a lot of sort of hard work to bring the fair in all its many parts um, to this moment. It's also given the artists and the galleries an extra couple of months to make new work mm -hmm. so actually I would say that there's a real vibrancy I mean we had artists actually on some of the stands yesterday making finishing touches to some of the paintings you know that always felt it feels like a really um, sort of precious moment so you know there's brand new work artists like Charlotte Keats with the Risha Gallery um, you know many of these works have been made in the last year so you know it's been a very a challenging period for artists but a very prolific one. The London Art Fair brings together over 100 galleries and this could have been the first time that some of these people have caught up with their peers and seen each other for quite a while now. Definitely. I think that opportunity to sort of reconnect and, you know, rekindle relationships and friendships, not just with the collectors and the visitors, but amongst the galleries themselves. I mean, the art fair has been running for 34 years and January always kickstarts the year with a bit of a reunion for the whole art world in London. So, yeah, it's been it's been really lovely to see galleries um, meeting up again. They enjoy having those sort of first previews as to what each other is brought um you know and i know that seals have been made already uh it being april and we've had a you know we've got over those trickier first months of the year do you think sales might be up a bit this year that you've done it a couple of months into the year yeah i think um you know people have turned to art and turned to creativity during the last um two years to help them through to try and make sense of the world to try and distract from what is going on i think art has the the power to do that and to help people i think just being able to have something which sort of allows you to escape from what's going on in the world around us um you know something that um in terms of the last two years and lockdown and spending much more time in our homes i think certainly people are looking at art you know for a domestic setting you know for things that they can live with and enjoy and bring joy into their lives is something which has definitely been rekindled so you'll see artwork um around the fair in some instances in a very sort of large scale and impactful but also work which is you know sort of more intimate scales smaller pieces that can allow um, a first-time collector um, or you know someone with a smaller home or a smaller wall to fill and um, the opportunity to buy and enjoy someone who is a first-time collector with a smaller home and a smaller wall what sort of prices does the art start from yeah well we cover everything from 200 pounds right up to 200,000 pounds if you're buying a you know a major modern British work from a 20th century name such as I look up and see the Eduardo Palazzi sculpture up in Osborne Samuel's stand we've got a really really unique um, never previously shown Patrick Heron oil from 1949 you can also acquire an original work from a really exciting up-and-coming name in art projects I would always encourage any any visitor to the fair to sort of feed that um, appetite for discovery and to want to champion a young artist in a really important moment in their career art projects is a great place for that for both um, young emerging UK galleries but also we have a really really strong representation from international galleries and art projects this year for the art fair this year it's about reconnecting with familiar faces but making new discoveries um, and that's what we've sought to do with the you know the mix of new and established London Art Fair exhibitors. Uh, any talks or discussions that you would highlight you think we should go and check yeah. out? So we had a really great session with the British Institute of Interior Design and Louisa Warfield who is an art consultant which is looking at art for interiors so I would say there's the opportunity to visit our website 
um, view that talk on demand, have a little bit of advice and a little bit of confidence in your back pocket when you come through the doors, um, and that's a great starting point. We've then got, as part of our Thursday Late program, um, sponsored by Campari, come along on Thursday Late, have a glass of Campari. We have a recital by a pianist, Dimitri, who is presenting a piece of um, music that has been inspired by the artist Matt Smith, who is shown by Cynthia Corbett Gallery. Cynthia also has a presence in Platform, which is our curated section of the fair, which this year takes the theme of art and music. Um, so that's a definite highlight of both the program in terms of live piano recital alongside a great opportunity to look at um, the intersection of art and music. <laughs> Sounds like a very busy program that you've got going on. Thanks busy, for busy. talking to Hoxton Radio today and good luck with the 34th edition this springtime in 2022. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thanks.